Uh, Zeke will be here in a minute. Just finish this something up and play. Okay, so uh, last thing we talked about were. Um, you said you were going to show us videos. About what? Of Parliament. Oh, okay. Uh, the parliamentary system versus. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Lily. So, yesterday, yeah, good discussion. I was still talking about the presidential system. We talked about the. the uh, parliamentary system, but we need to talk about the presidential system. Okay, so um, with the president, with the presidential system, okay, we talked about parliamentary, and key thing I said, right, the executive and the legislature Okay, here on a presidential are separate, okay, and in a parliamentary system they are combined. So you got to be a member of parliament to become the prime minister, right? Okay, and in a presidential system they are separate and independent of each other. Okay, um, so to def kind of define a presidential system, um, branches are independent and co-equal. They check each other. Okay, so the president is the chief executive. When any the end time of your chief executive guy said, that means they run the day to day affairs of the country. Okay, and the president is the head of state. Okay, so if Martians come down from Mars and they say, take me to your leader. Okay, we, we will take them to President Joe Biden. That will be, that's our leader. Okay, he's our head of state. All right. Recording. Uh, whereas in a parliamentary system, right, the head of state is different than the chief executive. Yes? Okay, so, and like I said, to make it confusing, you know, some countries use the president as their chief executive. It's very few, okay? Uh, but Russia is one of those. Russia has a parliamentary system. Vladimir Putin is the president, okay? There's a prime minister that go along with that that's the head of state. Weird, okay? And, of course, Germany has chancellor, who is the chief executive, and the head of state in Germany is the president. Okay, I'm not going to expect you to know that for the test, but know the difference between presidential and parliamentary systems. Okay, so let me give you one more example. When Barack Obama was elected president in 2008, he was a sitting member of the United States Senate. When he was elected president, he had to leave that position in the Senate, okay, to become president because you can't be in both separation of powers. Okay, so our system is set up where the president doesn't really answer to the people or to Congress, very rarely. Okay, once a year, our president goes in front of both houses of Congress. We call that, usually in January, we call that address. The State of the Union address. Okay, it's mandated by the Constitution that the President of the United States addresses Congress once a year, okay? So Nancy Pelosi will invite President Biden or President Bush or whoever the president is to come, and the Senate will all come over to the House chamber because it's bigger, and the president will address both houses of Congress. Now, every president of the United States has done this in person, orally, except for one. One of our presidents did not like to speak in public. So he submitted the address written. I'm sorry for this interruption. Third run, third lunch ran very long today. Uh, and so we have a number of students that will be arriving late to their fifth hour class. If you'd please give it another five minutes and then take roll, that should get everybody back to class. So thank you. <laughs> Watch to be able to eat. Yeah. 
Hey, B Y O L. Okay. What was I talking about before Slade interrupted me? Um, oh, the, the state of the only union. one president. The ah, yeah. Does anybody know who submitted it in writing? Was it was recent? Alvin Hewitt. And it was a really good writer. Jefferson. Jefferson submitted his in writing. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, British Parliament. So, the British Prime Minister, as I was telling you yesterday, has to, like, face the opposition party, okay? Okay, they have several parties, and that's another thing, guys. Parliamentary systems tend to have multiple parties. Like in Germany, there's like six major parties right now, okay? In Britain, they have the Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, and they have Labor, okay? Um, and generally... Um, the conservatives are referred to as the Tories. Okay. Yeah, there's some good, like, funny video clips on here. I'll try and show you a little bit. Funny. Funny. Hi, Members of Parliament behaving badly, part one. Particularly <laughs> <laughs> to where the pottery is committed. I wish the channel jobs would occasionally shut up and listen to the other. <laughs> Members can now follow the Prime Minister's advice to the Shadow Chancellor. We need a bit of order. The Prime Minister. I may be alone in finding him the most annoying person in modern politics, but I, I, anyway, uh, I'm sure Leno. No, no, I think I've got a feeling the leader of the opposition will one day agree with me. But, uh, I asked him a very important question about the windfall he received when he wrote up the mortgage of the premises in Notting Hill, and I said to him, he didn't write up the mortgage of the one the taxpayers were helping to pay for at Oxford. I didn't receive a proper answer then. Maybe Dodgy Dave will answer it now. And by the way, okay, so this is a member of the opposition party he is calling out the prime minister of the country in front of God and everybody. Okay. Now, there's a little known secret over here. Is off the side of the parliament, there's a bar. Or what you would call a pub in Britain. So members can go out and drink and then come back onto the floor. I know. I like it too because you... you Look, if you're going to be prime minister, you have to be quick on your feet. You got to be able to think, okay? And you've got to answer to for your, you know, your governance, how you govern, okay? And so, um, you know, sometimes he's getting pretty heated, and it's, there's insults and stuff like that, guys. When the president of the United States does a state of the union address, everybody claps, or they sit and they don't clap. Fall asleep, yeah. Okay, so um, let's play a little bit more of this. Order, 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 order. I must ask the honourable gentleman, order. Requiring insistence on duty of minutes. Sir, proposition. I invite order. I invite the honourable gentleman to withdraw that adjective that he used a moment ago. He's perfectly order, perfectly capable of asking his question without using that word. It is up to him, but if he doesn't wish to withdraw it, I can't reasonably ask the Prime Minister to answer the question. All he has to do is withdraw that word and think of another. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there was the word beginning with D and ending in Y that he inappropriately used. 
We draw. I know. I know. We draw. This man has done more to divide this nation than anybody else. He's looked after his own pocket. I still refer to him as Dougie Gale. Okay, so when you look at this room, the people on the back bench are the least powerful. Okay, the people on the front row are the party leaders. Okay, so if your party leaders don't like you, you're a back bencher. Okay, and we've all heard of Winston Churchill, right? Winston Churchill went from being a liberal backbencher, his own party didn't like him, okay, actually it would be over here, and then uh, he switched party to the conservatives, and he was a backbencher with the conservatives, okay, and uh, nobody liked him, okay? he was a loudmouth from the back bench, okay, so uh, you guys can pull up and watch more of that if you want, um, but it is certainly uh, more entertaining than our boring presidential system, okay. Which everything in our system is scripted. You know what I mean? Everything Joe Biden says he has written for him. Uh, now, he's not alone, right? Um, presidents have speech writers, right? And when they do public addresses, they have somebody that picks out their clothes for them, their ties and suits and so forth. Obama got in, uh, I wouldn't say trouble, but uh, it's kind of a scandal. Because one day he came out and did a press briefing in a, in a tan, light tan suit. And people were like, why is the president wearing a tan suit? Okay. Uh, so that was like people talking about. Did he dress himself that day? I guess he did. Uh, or somebody thought it would be a good idea. Uh, so, uh, yeah, our system is uh, not nearly as crazy. Now, you could see, I mean, if you looked at, like, Donald Trump getting impeached twice in one term, okay? And I'll explain that when we talk about impeachment. Obviously, impeachment doesn't mean removal from office, okay? Because he was not removed from office, all right? So, um, yeah, that was kind of a tumultuous time uh, where the president had to answer to Congress. Now, not in person. Uh, his lawyers did, okay? All right, so we're going to move on. Uh, we're still looking at different forms of government. Okay, but this time we're going to look at economic theories as forms of government. So to this point in your notes, you have a different forms of government based on geographic distribution of power, different forms of government based on the number of people that can participate. Okay, and then the third type, of, third criteria we're going to use here is economic theories as forms of government. You know how many I have? Five. Five economic theories as forms of government. Okay? You've heard of all of these, okay? But let's break them down, okay? Because this is kind of how you, this is a really good way of looking at, uh, you know, economic system, okay? So these are not actually forms of government, but economic systems that are guys for government, okay? So we'll start with um, mercantilism. Mercantilism, M-E-R-C-A-N-T-I-L-I-S-M, -S -S mercantilism. Yeah, you might remember studying this in world history, okay? Um, the belief there is a finite amount of wealth in the world, a finite amount of wealth in the world. And since there's only a finite amount of wealth in the world, you have to go out and get it. You have to basically conquer that wealth. Okay? Um, so colonies. Colonization. You saw this with the Spanish, yes? The British, the Dutch, the French, the Europeans. Okay? Um, and so colonies are created and exist for the mother country. Okay? 
They supply natural resources for the mother country. And they buy goods from the mother country, like British tea. Everybody understands the principle of mercantilism? Okay, the colonies exist for the sake of the mother country. Ready for economic theory number two? Socialism. Socialism. These get increasingly longer as definitions. All right. A theory or system of social reform. A theory or system of social reform. which contemplates a complete reconstruction of society. A theory or system of social reform which contemplates a complete reconstruction of society, come with a more just and equitable complete reconstruction of society, comma, with a more just and equitable Distribution of property and labor with a more just and equitable distribution of property and labor. You have two cows. The government takes them puts them in a barn with everyone else's cow, then gives you as much milk as it thinks you need. So let's talk about, think of your cows as tax dollars. So the government takes your tax dollars, puts them in a barn with everybody else's tax dollars, and then gives you as much back as it thinks you need as far as you know the, the welfare state goes. So whether it's free health care for everybody, we all pay into the kitty, and then the government pays for it. Does that make sense? That's socialism. Okay, so you're pulling everything together. Okay, now obviously some people that have more are going to put more in. Yes, but the idea is that everybody puts what they have in the barn, and then it's redistributed. Who gets to decide how much you get? The government, the government decides how much you get back. Okay. It's a pretty good uh, sum summation of uh, socialism. Okay. Okay. I had a text come across. I hope that doesn't show up on. Yeah. <laughs> somebody was complaining about masks. They did not use good language. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got socialism? Good. All right. Next one. Communism. A scheme of Equalizing the social conditions of life. A scheme of equalizing the social conditions of life. Semicolon. Specifically, comma. Scheme of equalizing the social conditions of life. Specifically, a scheme which contemplates... A scheme which contemplates the abolition of inequalities, contemplates the abolition of inequalities in the possession of property, comma, contemplates the abolition of inequalities in the possession of property, comma,
as by distributing, as by distributing all wealth equally to all, comma, as by distributing all wealth equally to all, comma, or by holding all wealth in common. Or by holding all wealth in common for the equal use and advantage of all. Or by holding all wealth in common for the equal use and advantage of all. Communism. You have two cows. Your neighbors help you take care of them, and everyone shares the milk. Okay? They're not really your cows anymore. Everybody's going to share from your cows. Okay? But they're everybody's cows, and everyone shares the milk. So, guys, communism. And, you know, in history, we'll talk about the Bolshevik Revolution and get into that quite a bit, okay, about the specifics of communism. Um, Marxism, or the communist idea, uh, is about tearing down the wealthy, the aristocrats, the owners, and bringing them down and rising everybody up where everyone is equal. So no private property. Everything's held in common, okay? I remember this just popped into my head. I had a former student, uh, the Garris. Uh, three brothers came through here, the Garris. Their grandfather was from Cuba, okay? And when uh, Castro took over in 1959, uh, they had a house. His grandfather had a house with a swimming pool. And um, just random people just started showing up at their house and swimming in the pool. I'm like, uh, excuse me, what are you doing? Said, well, this is our pool too. What are you going to do? Call the government? Tell them people, no, it's all held in common. Okay, so I mean that's that's kind of a startling like realization uh, when you know the ideas of communism will take over. There's no religion either generally uh, found in communism. Okay, because people, uh, the government wants them, uh, the people to worship. The altar of government for their subsistence. Okay. Okay. Uh, the third and longest definition, fourth, or excuse me, yes, is bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Let me spell that for you. B U R E A U C R A C Y. Bureaucracy. And just by definition, the definition will be long because we're talking about bureaucracy. <clears throat> a system of carrying on the business of government. A system of carrying on the business of government. By means of departments or bureaus. System of carrying on the business of government. By means of departments or bureaus, B U R E A U S, comma, each under the control of a chief, each under the control of a chief, T H I E F. I know, I'm sure I missed it too. <laughs> Each under control of a chief, comma, in contradiction to a system, in contradiction to a system in which the officers of government, in contradiction to a system in which the officers of government have an associated authority and responsibility. Have an associated authority and responsibility. 
bureaucracy. Okay, let me let me ask you something here. How many guys uh, have jobs? Okay, where do you work? I mow lawns. Where? I mow lawns. You mow lawns. Okay. <laughs> Quick trip. Yeah. Okay. Good one. I right, come back to you. Yeah. Starbucks. Good one. Firehouse. Where? Firehouse. Firehouse. So. Indiana? DNA. Walmart. Okay, so you got two that kind of own their own businesses. You don't really qualify for this, okay? Um, let's go to Quick Trip. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you're on mute. You, you're on mute. Yeah, I'm on mute. Do you have a job? Yeah, I work at Longhorn. Okay, that's a good one too. Okay, let's go to Walmart and Quick Trip. Okay, so when we say, uh, okay, bureaucracy has departments or bureaus, okay, with a chief, all right, where in private sector, privately owned businesses, so you work at Quick Trip, what do you do there? Uh, I run the register and the chain. Okay. So your job is to make the customer happy, right? So if I come in and I need uh, to find a mineral water and I can't seem to find it, I can ask you that, right? Yeah, you can take me there, right? Same thing at Walmart. What do you do at Walmart? All kinds of stuff. Okay, so you have an associated responsibility and authority to make the customer happy. Okay, in government, they tend to keep every every job title in separate. You know what I mean? Like, let me give you an example. I'm going to tell you my story of bureaucracy. Okay, uh, I don't, I haven't told you guys this before, but uh, I was once elected to public office. Okay, my neighbors elected me to the Whispering Brook Homeowners Association Board of Directors. Okay, you guys have a homeowners association in your neighborhood? Okay, don't get me started, right? They're the ones that say, you got to mow your grass, your house, you know. Uh, my neighbor, who's on the board, just had got a notice that he had, like, bill due on his garage door. So he borrowed my power washer so he could clean his garage door. That kind of thing, right? And you got to pay dues in these homeowner associations to, you know, row, uh, mow the commons areas, right? You got any homeowner associations? That's a good gig because you got a lot of grass to mow, right? And then we have a couple of uh, ponds in our neighborhood. It's called Whispering Brook, and there's fountains. And so, you know, we got to pay for those and maintain all that, so you pay homeowners dues, okay? If you don't pay your homeowners dues, you could, then, you, then the homeowners can put a lien on your house. So when I was on the board, I had the, there was this guy in our neighborhood that wouldn't pay his dues. So I had to go put a lien on his house. I'm like, well, where do I do that? So I go to City Hall to do that. And I go to the information desk at City Hall, and I say, hi, my name's Charlie Ebright. Uh, I'm on the Whispering Brook Homeowner Association Board of Directors, and I need to put a lien on somebody's house. He says, oh, okay, well, you'll need to go up to the fifth floor to do that. So I go up to the fifth floor, okay, I get there. It's not clearly marked. There's two lines, two windows. And so I get in the shorter line, and I get up to the front after a few minutes, and I say, hi, I'm Charlie Newbright from the Whispering Home Association. I need to put a lien on somebody's house. She says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you at this window. You're going to need to go to the other window. So I get back in that line, wait for that, get in here, get up to the front, say, hi, I'm Charlie Newbright from the... She says, oh, well, since this is a residential lien, you're going to need to go down to the third floor. Now, if I was at Walmart or Quick Trip at that point, would I have walked out? I mean, I think every time I go to Home Depot, guys, by my house, the service is horrible. So, I mean, I'm sometimes willing to drive like five miles to go to Lowe's just so I have good service. You know what I mean? But with the government, there's nowhere else to go. And you guys have all been to the DMV. Okay? How do we like that? Now, i got to give them some props. Okay, they're better than they were 15 years ago. Because they have the call ahead, text ahead thing where you can get in line. Brilliant. Okay, does it work half the time? Eh, I've had trouble with it. 
okay? Um, I was at the tag office because I got a new truck. I get a new tag, and I did that with the government. And, you know, I mean, it, there was a bunch of people. It took a long time. They had, like, 16 windows. Only about eight of them were staffed. You know what I mean? So you're going to wait. You know, you might as well block off a couple hours if you're going, okay? So that's the inefficiency of government is bureaucracy. Oftentimes it's referred to as red tape. Like you've got to cut through red tape to get anything done, or uh, you have to jump through hoops to do these things, okay? Generally, you find that with government. Government tends to be inefficient, okay? It's wasteful, not efficient. If you own a business, and a lot of you guys work for businesses, okay, they got to be efficient, okay? So they created an associated responsibility and authority for their employees to make the customer happy. Yes? Government doesn't have to do that because there's nowhere else to go. Follow me? Yeah. Because if that lady on the fourth floor could have done that for me, then the person or the lady on the fifth floor could have gotten a lien for me, then maybe the lady on the third floor's job wasn't really necessary. Follow me? And we can't have that. We don't, we can't have efficient government. Because then we'd have to lay people off, and that would cause pain. We're not going to do that. Guys, you'd be very hard-pressed to find government programs or government agencies that were created that ever went away. <laughs> now, in business, you got something that's not efficient, then you may think about changing all right, so there's bureaucracy, one of the most frustrating things there is. Guys, I when I first started teaching here at Bishop Carroll, there was so little bureaucracy, it was it was awesome. Okay. Now that I'm a department chair, 20 years later, you gotta jump through the hoops, man. A lot, a lot of red tape and uh, things that take your time, take time away from actually being able to teach. Okay. All right, the fifth economic theory is a form of government is capitalism. Now, Ruby and Oscar, you can't play on this one, okay? We all know, uh, raise your hand if you know who wrote the Communist Manifesto. Does that. Communist Manifesto. Carl. Yeah. 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 And Friedrich. And uh, okay. So now, do we live in a communist country? But most Americans know who Karl Marx is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Raise your hand. I don't know if Ruby or Oscar remember this from history, but they'll be reminded again. Yeah. Who do we give credit as kind of the author of capitalism? And we live in a capitalist society, right? Isn't it weird how we all know who Marx is, but we don't know who Adam Smith was? <laughs> yes, The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. Okay, so with capitalism, okay, there's a belief that there is a fi uh, infinite amount of wealth in the rather than a finite, an infinite amount of wealth in the world, okay? Which is a very optimistic way of viewing things for sure, okay? Supply and demand control the marketplace. Supply and demand control the marketplace, not government. Government doesn't set supply and demand. They don't set prices. Supply and demand determines that. Okay, so when there's an uptick in the economy and the economy grows and more people are using energy, generally what happens to the price of energy? It goes up because there's higher demand. Okay, so that's how a capitalist market works. Now, capitalism doesn't come without government regulation. 
It just needs to be minimal. So that's your laissez-faire economics or the invisible hand of government. That took a long time. That took a long time. You're probably going to have to watch the video. Okay. Or get notes from somebody. Okay, so you got laissez-faire or hands off government. Okay, you want to spell laissez? Yeah. L A I S S E Z dash F A I R E. Okay, so Adam Smith wrote the uh, Wealth of Nations where he discusses laissez faire or the invisible hand of government. Okay, so government, and Mr. Sorge and I have this debate. You know, we're, we both believe in capitalism. Um, I tend to believe in more unfettered capitalism. Where he feels like the hand of government needs to play a bigger role. Why? Because, guys, there's greed in the world, and there will be people that will abuse other people using capitalism. You understand? Like uh, child labor. That's a good way to get rich. You know, pay a kid 25 cents an hour for child labor, and you can make all the profits. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So the hand of government got involved in that and created child labor laws. You understand? So there's got to be some regulation. But that regulation, that hand of government, did not come in and choke <laughs> or, you know, just, I wasn't going to hurt you. I was just going to show you. Okay? Or choke the economy. With too much regulation. Lily, if you just relax, nothing would have happened. Okay? You know what I mean? Stifle the economy. All right. Ruby Oscar, sorry, but you get to hear it again. Capitalism. You have two cows. You sell one and you buy a bull. What happens? You get cows, okay? And you can mate a couple times with that one cow, and then you have the offspring. And you trade the bull with another guy that's got a bull, and you have that bull impregnate the offspring, right? And pretty soon you have cattle. What are you going to do with the cattle? We're going to milk the cows? We're going to milk the cows. You're going to drink the milk? You're going to make butter? You're going to make cheese, right? And you can sell that, but what you're going to do, once you have enough cattle, you're like, man, I don't have time to milk all these cows. So I'm going to hire somebody and give them a job, okay? And they're going to milk my cows. And that guy that's milking my cows is going to save his money that I pay him, and he's going to buy some chicken, okay? And he's going to start a chicken farm, all right? And then he's going to hire somebody to pluck the eggs from the, you know, the the hens, okay? And then once I get enough milk, I'm going to hire somebody to deliver that milk to the marketplace. So I'm going to hire a truck driver. That truck driver makes money delivering for me, and he saves up money and buys a second truck and hires a new driver. And before long, this guy has a trucking company. What you do is you create wealth through entrepreneurship, okay? Yeah, some of you that own your own business, you're mowing lawns, or I'm not sure what you're doing with your own business, but once you hire an employee, cheesecakes. Okay. Do you have anybody that helps you? Not yet. <laughs> okay. Now, guys, once you, if you do decide to hire an employee, you're going to get a bunch of bureaucracy. You're going to have to fill out all these forms. You're going to have to pay payroll taxes for this individual and all the stuff. It's going to be a lot of bureaucracy, okay? But hopefully you reach a point where you can do that, hire somebody to help you. Uh, you will create wealth for that individual. And what people do with what money they make, they can turn that into more wealth. Okay, government doesn't create wealth. We do. People create wealth. Guys, this is how we became the most powerful economy in the history of the world. We didn't become this through socialism. 
okay? And socialism is not going to bring us out of whatever situation we're living in right now, okay? Now, we do socialistic things in our economy now, like with roads. We all put our money in the barn, okay? And the government builds roads, and we get to use them, okay? That's, in a sense, socialism, okay? But that's another thing that governments tend to do, okay? When you start getting into things, things like everybody uh, gets housing, everybody gets health care, everybody gets food through socialism, that, now you're really turning into a welfare state. Okay? Um, so there's a big difference. I mean, we're going to have elements of socialism within capitalism. That makes sense. Okay? Uh, like public schools, right? I mean, Put the money in, tax, tax money in, and we educate everybody. And that benefits everybody. Because we don't want a bunch of idiots running around our country that can't get a job and create their own wealth. Okay? So those are the five economic theories as forms of government. Okay? Good? All right, so. 35, we get out. All right, well, we got through that section. Tomorrow, we'll look at five basic concepts of democracy. How many? Five. Peace. Hope you feel better, man.